So lane one, Hintu Chow from Hong Kong. And uh, we'll follow all of this race live. There's Tyler Nays from the USA, 28 years of age, from Phoenixville, Philadelphia. Garetti, the Italian. And uh, we'll chat about him and the special equipment he's using. See a little bit of those special foils he's got on top of his blade, actually. That's quite interesting. Rakron Vat there, we've seen in lane four, the Slovenian. Ephraistos Consolos, the Greek scholar, 30 years of age, and the Turkish, Fati Unsal, the Turkish scholar. Youngster, really, 24 years of age, coached by Senet Dogan. And uh, we're going to hope to focus a little bit on the Italian's blades, Martino Goretti's blades, because he's using a different set of blades than any other sculler in this championship. They're foils, USA. and uh, he was incredibly fast in the heat. Italy. He thinks they give him Slovenia. a decent advantage, and we hope we'll show you that through this race to sculler in lane three, Turkey. Martino Goretti. Attention. Well, Clean start from all six scholars there, Greg. Well, let's hope we're in for another great race. Um, we had a real treat in the last one. You can never count any of these scholars out as we have a look now. We are closing in on Martino Goretti. He seems like a lovely bloke. We met him in town the other day. He's moved from sweep rowing to sculling. And um, he's made these adjustments to those croker blades when we get a look down at the spoon, which he says helps him to load them up, helps him make it feel a little bit heavier, a little bit more like the feel he used to get when he was sweep rowing rather than sculling. Yeah, they are foils, and we need to get a really close picture of the spoon. It's going to be difficult at this high rate of striking. It's almost that you need the tracking camera to, to zoom in on them. But uh, Goretti blasting off, and I would imagine that he's pretty close to the front of this field. Certainly, there you can see... Rate 40 in first place. The blades of Efnerisos Consolas of Greece in second. The Turkish Skull are doing well to be in third place ahead of the Skull from Hong Kong, Chu Hin Chun. See the graphics there on the bottom right. Well, well, Martino no. Goretti had a great win in the heat. He was a long way ahead of the rest of the field. Whether that's down to him or what that might be to do with those blades that he really rates and says he's tested and found really helpful. Who knows? But uh, at the moment, he's got a pretty decent lead. Let's remember, it's uh, quarter-final. There's a long way to go yet, and it's three to qualify, and uh, it's going to be another close one. Yeah, the Italian came second in the Italian trials. Was it behind uh, Oppo or Ruta? I can't remember who he said won the Italian trials. With the two guys in the Italian double, so far, that's a bar. The coach has told Goretti he can't go and trial for the... Italian double, so he's got to do the best he can in the single this year, like when I mean single try and win it, and then he's going to look at his options for the Olympic year so can you see the foils on the top of those blades, I think you can just yeah, so I think what we're looking for is the top of the blade the bit that stays just almost out of the water, and it looks like a little black line on there, that he has attached which almost looks like it just scoops and holds on to a little bit more water that would give him that feeling of just a little bit better connection yeah, and he says he's had to play around with the gearing of his boat, make it a little easier just to uh, compensate for that extra feel you get on the front end with those foil blades. There is a front-on shot from Ephraistos Consolos from Greece, the 30-year-old. So he was in second place through the 500, still in second place now with that scholar from the United States, Taylor Nays. Um, in the third all-important qualifying place, but what about the Turkish team? They've been pretty impressive so far in this championships, desperate to try and make it into these semi-finals. Well, Goretti is miles out in front, isn't he? It's like watching crews like the Chinese women's quad being so dominant in their races. It's Sanita Pospura in the women's single skull. She was in a different race. Let's see who else is in the race. Closing in there on the Greek Sculler, the US Sculler in third place, just coming up to the 1,000 metre mark. It's Martino Goretti in the first place at the halfway point. Massive lead for the Italian. 
And there's nothing exceptional that he's doing there, really. He's just at 35 strokes a minute. His boat's just a little bit faster than everyone else. He's a bit better connected. Still, really, you could throw a blanket over these five scholars for those second two places. But at the head of the field, there's no doubt this is Martino Goretti's race. He's from the Moto Guzzi Club near Como, on Lake Como. Um, uh, it's really open and nice chatting to us about his experience of sculling and being a lightweight. As Tyler Nays finished 10th in Rio in the lightweight four. Alumnus of Princeton University. Tyler Nays made a good move there from 1,000 pushing it into this third quarter. This is the really important bit where we're going to sort some things out before that final sprint. As we look in boat number four, at the back of the field, the Slovenian sculler is in danger of letting the race get away from him. Yeah, Rakhar Havac took a silver medal in the Rotterdam World Cup which was in the final of the Europeans, but he needs to be in the top three in this quarter-final to get through to the AB semi-final. That's the last 12 of this event. The Slovenian up at 39 strokes a minute. This is a real sprint for him. Well, I think he's realised the race is getting away from him, and it's now or never. So he's trying to make a move to get back into that top three. Yeah, you've got the experience of Tyler Nays, the American. And that lightweight four. So many of these athletes have been in this event now, been in the lightweight men's fours. Now discontinued event in the Olympics. Garetti way out in front. I think a lot of the competitors are going to be looking at the equipment Goretti is using and thinking, you know, we need to look at that and trial that in the forthcoming season, Greg. Well, it's hard to know. I mean, he says he's one of the fastest scholars in Italy and we know their lightweight double is fantastic, going to be challenging for the gold medal. So I'm sure it's more down to him than it is the equipment. Um, but he is doing very well with those foil blades up at the head of the field. This scholar Tyler Nays from the United States is looking like he is nailing down that second position. Third is up for grabs, and it is the Turkish scholar who is coming through and currently now into that third place finishing position and qualifying for the semi finals. I haven't seen Faith and Sul at all really in this race figure, but uh, what a brilliant third quarter to come through into this strong position in the last part of the race, the last 500 metres. He's moving away as we see him go out there, the 24 year old coached by Sonat Dogan. Been in the lightweight men's quad this season. Last year he was in the lightweight men's quad that's got a bronze medal. You can see the lead that he's got, the three scholars out there. There's Goretti in first place. We're just watching him. You can see the foils on the top of his blade there. Quite a good shot, the best we've had in the race. Tyler Nays, the American in second place. Faith Unsel now in third place. And the big question is really, can the green scholar respond? Faith Unsel's now got this out to a length, and I can't see anyone coming back at him right now. The Slovenian scholar tried to go early, but he seems to be spent. So does the Greek scholar to his right, and this is fantastic for Turkish rowing to see Faith Unsel here looking pretty solid in the third qualifying place. There's about 10 strokes to go. Martino Goretti out in the front of your picture. You're looking for the battle for the third and fourth places there. The Turk dominating it. The Greek coming back at the Turkish scholar. Turkish scholar's got to do something like blowing up to let the Greek back into it. Goretti coming up to the line there. Greek Scholar is coming back. Goretti takes first place. Tyler Nays from America. Will Skull takes second. Faith Unsel makes clear water margin over the Greek. Found something extra in the last five strokes. Greek Scholar crosses the line in fourth. Rako Havat from Slovenia in fifth. And at the top of your picture, Chu Hin Chun from Hong Kong crosses the line in sixth. So we're going to get replays quite soon, but we're going to pick up on the story this morning of the quarter-final of the men's pairs. It was the second quarter-final and we're going to see exactly how the Polish crew broke their blade and we'll be able to chat about that, the controversial decision to re-row that quarter-final, won by the Italians ahead of the Canadians and Romanians. Can't see anyone beating those three, but uh, FISA have decided to re-row that race because the Polish pair, I think, hit an umpire's boat. There's Goretti winning his heat of the lightweight men's single skulls. Martino Goretti was fantastic, wasn't he? Got control of that very early. 6.53. Here's the start list for the first AB semi. We've got Gary O'Donovan from Ireland in lane one, Jan Schobler, Switzerland, Martino Goretti of Italy, Peter Gallenbosch of Hungary, Sean Murphy of Australia and 
Milos Jankowski off Poland in lane six, and they're off. Yeah, a very quick start, isn't it, from all the scholars in that race. We're zooming in on Goretti, who's been absolutely on fire here. The uh, 33-year-old Italian at the top of his game. Can't quite get into that lightweight Italian double skull, the Olympic class boat, but in this international class, he seems to be peerless. And how about the way those blades lock on? He's talked to us about them. He said he wants to try and make it feel like sweep rowing so he can get a really good connection. You can almost see those blades he has with the foils on them just lock in really solidly so he can then kind of whack it with his back. So it doesn't actually look that subtle in terms of the way he's applying his force. But he's able to kind of scull the way he wants to row and uh, that seems to work pretty well for him in the single. Yeah, it's really punchy from the Italian. And looking at his rival here alongside from Hungary, it's Peter Gallenbosch. Contrasting style, he uses loads of length and lean back. A slightly lower rating than his Italian rival, and it's just taken him to a slight lead over Martina Goretti. It's interesting in that beautiful boat, we see that lovely bird in the uh, red, white and green colours of the Hungarian flag. And this is, I think it's a Laszlo boat, and Laszlo took over the boat manufactured from Kiers in New Zealand, and that's the boat that the Hungarian is using in this race. And as we see him now, you can see Peter Kalambosch there keeping his pace as well as he can, but what he will notice is to his right that that Italian scholar Martino Goretti has just started to slip past him in this second, well, as coming up to the uh, 500 in that second 250. Jason Osborne did a 137 last year in the World Championship in Plovdiv, where he set the world's best time. Goretti just two seconds outside of that. I think the world record is not under threat in this race, but it's a pretty fast pace, isn't it? And Goretti will move out in this second quarter. Gary O'Donovan did so well to make this race on that outside lane one. The Irish world champion in lightweight double skulls lost his place. Little wobble there, lost his place to Fintan McCarthy in the double with his brother. We saw them come down and win that uh, semi final earlier. Grabbed an Olympic spot. What has Gary O'Donovan got to look forward to? Well, he's got to get through in this race. Well, he's got Jan Schuble, the young Swiss scholar, out there for company. The two of them need to work hard together to get back into contention for that third qualifying place as we see the Italian scholar Goretti at the head of the field. Galambosch here in second place fairly solidly, and he has the Australian Sean Murphy for company. Yeah, Sean Murphy's had a good season so far. Sean Murphy winning in the second World Cup in Poznan, also again in Rotterdam in that third World Cup. So he's really been on form this season, but trailing Peter Gallenbosch and Martino Goretti at the moment. He's beaten them already this season. Maybe his race plan, he's saving something for the second half of this race. He's just looking over to his right. He's got that overlap with the Hungarian on his right. Yeah. He has got that. I think that's a pretty useful place to have uh, an overlap with Galambos. But uh, he's going to look further to his right. And then the young Swiss, the 19-year-old Jan Schauble in the red boat. And then Gary O'Donovan over there in lane one. Uh, Milos Jankowski is edging through the Polish scholar. Now in fourth place on this near side lane. And I just noticed Sean Murphy there just had to run over a stray boy that had uh, drifted into the middle of his lane. He managed not to let it affect him too much. Just good focus and relaxation that you can kind of ride with any bumps that come your way. He rode over that boy in the centre of his lane. Now here he is, still putting pressure on Peter Galambosch and hanging on to that all-important third position. Don McClacken, the Australian's coach, will be loving this because his athlete is moving away from the crews behind him. You've got around about a 10-metre gap between him and the Swiss sculler. He's got to keep an eye on the pole. That's over there on his left. Galambosch just edging out on the Australian. Don McClacken won't like that so much. But there is the pole. What do you think about this skull in the third quarter from Milos Jankowski? Polish sculler absolutely got the tail blasters on the 29-year-old. Goretti out in front with those super foils on the end of his croaker blades. Giving him more purchase on the front end of the stroke. More purchase through the middle of the stroke. And a nice easy push out to the finish. Has to adjust his gearing to make up for it. But surely more... Cruz will be trying this technological innovation if Goretti is as successful as it looks like he will be in this World Championships. There's the bows of the Hungarian scholar, the Hungarian flag there. 
Peter Gallenbosch holding on to his second place ahead of Sean Murphy has pushed on. Well, we've seen some fantastic finishes from lightweight men's singles so far in this regatta. I would definitely not count out Jankowski, the Polish sculler, coming into the bottom of the shot now. Will he have the change of pace we've seen from other scullers throughout this regatta and have the ability to push up onto Sean Murphy, the Australian beside him? Yeah, don't, don't ride off Jan Chavely, the Swiss sculler. He's sculling to the right of uh, this Italian here in the next lane, lane two. But Goretti is out in front, as he has been in the heat, as he has been in the quarterfinals. Greg, you're looking at a technical move there. Yeah, just looking at the way those blades lock up, and it almost looks like there's a kind of wobble as he kind of gets the blade in. It's like a sort of flex as that that spoon locks into the water, and, uh, and he makes that connection. And we see here, just moving to Sean Murphy, just taking a look in both directions. He looks like he's really in a fight here, as you can see the speed of the Polish colour beside him. Yeah, Sean Murphy's under real pressure now from Milos Jankowski of Poland. Australians responded now. Sean Murphy's seen that challenge coming from his left-hand side. He's up the rate and moved up. But Gary O'Donovan Gary stops sculling. So Gary O'Donovan stops, but that is not where the race is. The race is at the head of the field. How about this? Look at the Italian. He has got this one in control. Peter Galambos is in second place. I think Sean Murphy has done what he needs to to look after that third finishing position. He's holding off. Jankowski, as we're coming towards this picture, you can see it on the left of the screen, Jankowski in that yellow Empacker boat is not going to be able to force his way into the top three, I don't think. Goretti leads in the last five strokes, Galambos in second place, Sean Murphy he's found the motivation on the sprint finish is going through, Galambos he'll grab that second place, Goretti takes the first place, Sean Murphy takes second, Galambos takes third. Jankowski drifts across the line. We did see pictures there of Gary O'Donovan. Fair enough, the Italians flag wave. Big news, Gary O'Donovan, any O'Donovan brother, what they do. And uh, 6.49, that is a pretty quick time. Just outside of the world's best. Well, look at that great picture of that shoe disappearing from the bow of Peter Galambos's boat, um, as you saw that. That's what it's like off the start of one of these races. Sorry, Martin. No, you cut across. I think that was decent. I thought that this man rode a really well-judged race, Sean Murphy, didn't he? Absolutely soaked up the pressure from Jankowski and then turned on the afterburners for the last 10 strokes. Got through. Lopez Garcia, great bet for the silver medal for me, Montremont Murphy. Murphy's had a great season. There are the scholars lined up. Two minutes. We'll go through the lane introduction for you. There's the 32-year-old Hungarian... Peter Galambos in that uh, beautiful boat with that wonderful design we'll see on the bows of the boat as he goes down the course. Sean Murphy, winner of the Rotterdam and Poznan World Cups. The Mossman man from Sydney, coached by Don McClacken. Love the wave from Martino Goretti, such a lovely lad. And uh, Greg Sell and I. Met him, spent some time with him around the town of Linz. Funky socks from Alexis Lopez Garcia, the Mexican sculler, just 22 years of age. It's pretty uninterested, isn't it, Sam Mottram? He's not going to wave to the crowd. Just led back on his boat, taking it all in. In lane five. And here's the Canadian sculler. Aaron Latterman, 23 years of age, on an outside lane in the white Hudson shell. Yeah, it's an interesting thing you say there, Martin, looking at Sam Motra and how sort of laid back he looked. Um, difficult for the athletes to know how to react when their names get announced. It was nice to see Martino Goretti giving that wave. This is a new thing at the World Rowing Championships this year. And to me, it does really feel like we're building the atmosphere up and you can feel it in the crowd, the kind of tension and excitement for these races. Goretti focused a look across to his left and Alexis Lopez Garcia, his Mexican opposition. The Mexican looks to Italy. his left to Sam Motron. To his Mexico. right to Goretti. The starter completes Canada. the call over Attention. and we will soon have the start of this lightweight men's single skulls fight. Scholars explode into action, and uh, first off, it was the Mexican Lopez Garcia took a little jump on Goretti there in the first two or three strokes of the race. 
he did explode into action, didn't he? That um, shoe disappeared beneath the water and uh, he was immediately straight onto it, just picking the boat up and moving. But how about Peter Galambosch and that beautiful boat up in lane number one? He's the quickest away. Well, I think he knows he's got to compete early on in this race, get a decent start and then settle into his mid-course pace. Not sure the, what the sprinting power will bring him. Uh, he's seen how fast coretti has been going. He knows what the sculler to his left, Sean Murphy, can do and has been doing in this competition throughout the season. The lightweight men's single skulls, all these athletes weighing in at no more than 72.5 kilos two hours before this race. Well, they've weighed in a number of times and they've given us some fantastic races over the course of this week. For these scholars, it's been a pretty big journey to get this far. We've enjoyed their races and we've enjoyed seeing this man, Martino Goretti, at the head of the field, locking those blades into the water and loading up his legs, his back. There's almost a judder as he locks them into the water. You see it in his shoulders as their skulls lock into the water. Yeah, and I hope we're going to get some really close-up pictures of the spoons of those blades with those special sort of foils on the top of them to make them really lock well. There's Goretti. We can't see the blades. You might get a chance to see that down the course, but... Uh, He's the one person using that equipment in this year's World Championship. He's been trialling it in Italy. As you know, Greg, we chatted to him in the town about it, and he's really pleased with the results. He is pleased with the results, and be pleased with this result, that he's got about a length lead. He's the highest rating on the course, up at about 38 strokes a minute as he came out through that 500. And he's got a reasonable lead there as we have a look at those socks. Um, uh, what are those things called? There's films about them, aren't there? Yeah. Minions. Minions. Oh, you think they're the Minions They're Minions socks, socks aren't they? Oh, they're like a little Greg, Minion peeking up at us. Greg Sell getting down there with popular culture. The Mexican in fourth place at the moment. In front, on the right of your screen, Goretti. In second place, Peter Galambas at the top of your screen. In third place, it's the Australian, Sean Murphy. The Mexican back in fourth at the moment. That's the one, two, three, as we are into the second quarter of this race. 1,250 metres to go. Sam Mottram yet to figure the British sculler there back in fifth. That's right. This is Sam Mottram we're having a look at here, looking along his blades. That's a very conventional-looking blade that we're used to seeing. But he's back in sixth place, um, and he's about 30 metres behind. So he won't be pleased with the way the field's got away from him when you look at the spread up to the Italian sculler here at the head of the field. You can just see, can't you, on the top of those blades, that uh, foil that Goretti is using, that sort of black mark at the top of the blade. Helps the blade get more bite, more purchase. Means he's got to be a little easier on his gearing, a little looser. But uh, he finds that he goes really well with those blades. Well, we've got to say thank you to ORF for these fantastic pictures. You're seeing this World Rowing production doing our be their best to try and show you what we're asking for, which is that spoon of that Italian blade with a little black foil along the top of it. What Martino Goretti said to us is that it feels like it locks up that little bit heavier in the water. It feels a little bit more like sweep rowing, which is what he was used to in the lightweight four. But now he's looking to be a lightweight sculler. He'd dearly love to be in that double skull for Italy. But they're a pretty fast double and pretty hard to get into. So here he is in the single. Yeah, and there's the blades of the Mexican. You can see those cleaver blades, the concept two skinnies, but without the foil on the top. Probably got a little tougher gearing than Goretti. Mexican sculler in fourth place keeping ahead of Sam Mottram in fifth but only just and Aaron Latimer trying to make a charge on this near side lane Greg yeah interesting the way this is shaping up this is really the race for silver medal at the top of the course it is between Peter Galambosch and Sean Murphy of Australia these two at the moment you can see in the bottom right of the screen they're neck and neck together in the second position behind the Italian the other three are in that in, in that sort of fourth fifth and sixth position Look at this going on the surge, stroke for stroke. This is what it's all about. Sculling racing side by side, pushing to try and get into that silver medal position. Wow. Well, Sean Murphy's not had quite the best of championships, bearing in mind his fantastic two gold medals in the World Cup season. He beat Galambos in the Poznan World Cup. Galambos had to finish in third place in that lightweight men's single. But uh, absolutely determined the Mossman man from Australia to maintain that silver medal position and if he can edge back on Goretti.
Well, I think there's a few things going on here. It does look like the Australian is trying to edge back on Goretti from lane two. It also looks like Sam Mottram on the left of our picture there in lane number five from Great Britain is trying to edge back and into a medal position. But there's still quite a lot of clear water and there's only 500 metres left for big changes to happen. To the 1500 metre mark in 5.12.69. That's over a length lead. You can see the clear water margin that Goretti has over Galambos and Sean Murphy. Galambos absolutely sculling out of his skin in the last part of that third quarter there to hold off the charge from Sean Murphy. The Australian will come again. You can see he's trying to come again now. Galambos is going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That was a fast start from Galambos. I wonder if that will cost him that beautiful Hungarian bird on the front of that lovely white boat that Galambos is sculling in. He's found a little bit and Sean Murphy, perhaps he's thrown in too much too soon. Well, how about that? It's a match race between these two for the silver medal. It has been for about the last thousand metres. It's Galambos and Murphy. But as he looks over his left shoulder now, Galambos of Hungary can see he's moving away from the Australian. He wants the Italian. He wants the gold medal, but it's only 2.50 to go. Yeah, Goretti, as I look to my left, looks well clear of Galambos. Question of whether Sean Murphy's going to be picked off by anybody at the latter stage of the race. He looks like he's tiring. And maybe Sam Mottram, maybe Alexis Lopez Garcia can pick him up. I don't think so. They will be trying to do that, but I can tell you that in the silver medal position, you can see it in the bottom right of your court, of your picture. The Hungarian skull is trying to close that gap. You can see the spread on the field. It looks fairly clear for the Italian Goretti at the head of the field. Then you see your silver and your bronze. Will anyone else be able to push in and get to that medal podium? Sending a sign to the Italian coach. He wants to be in the lightweight men's double. Wants to fight for a place with Oppo and Ruta, but he's fought for the gold medal in the lightweight men's singles. Martino Goretti is going to win that gold medal for Italy. A brilliant race as he crosses the line. Clear water ahead of Peter Galambos of Hungary. The Australian fast fading hangs on just from Lopez Garcia. The Mexican and Britain Sam Mottram and Aaron Latimer from Canada will come in in sixth place. Well, Goretti, can't believe it. I mean, he's been in such phenomenal form here, but look. Well, he's too tired to celebrate, isn't he? And it's not surprising. Um, he locks those blades up. He gives it everything he can. And uh, we've had some fantastic races from this lightweight men's single. Today didn't disappoint. Um, Peter Galambos out there on the outside lane, coming through and getting the silver medal. Don't get too many silver medals coming from uh, lanes one and six, but he turned around the uh, form guide. Pushed this man, Sean Murphy, down into the uh, bronze medal position. But you can see he's also delighted to be on the podium. What a great little race that was. Great yeah. little race. Great pictures we're able to show you. Thank you to our director for trying to get us in close and get you the Respect images from the Hungarian Scarlet We want to show you to try and help you be as inside the sport as you possibly can and inside the action. Minion socks, as you pointed out, Greg, for Lopez Garcia. There's the Australian who really went toe to toe with Galambos in the third quarter, but uh, that cost him dear, and he was hanging on, hanging on for that bronze medal at the end of that race, the 23 year old Australian. Yeah, great call that, Martin. I'd sort of forgotten how much he was hanging on for that bronze medal because it was out of the shot, but those other two scholars, the Mexican and the British scholar, were coming back at him pretty hard. You can see the blades of Goretti just coming up. We'll see another shot of that foil on the top of the blade. Well, perhaps not quite there. And you can see him wearing that croaker hat. That's that blade maker um, written on his, his blades as well.